here's the dilemma. You're starting your business. They start getting results from the business. And one says, uh oh, I want to diversify because millionaires make their millions by multiple streams of income. Well, here's a problem. You divert all of these skills into another product or offering. You divert these skills into another city and state. You divert these skills and cash and capital into a new product that you still have not researched and developed over time. In other words, you're diverting your cash, capital, and talents and intentions to multiple different areas too soon. And what happens instead of having multiple streams of income, now you just got multiple trickles. Okay, shh, promise me you will not share this video. Why, don't share it, why? Because all those online gurus that never made money by actually selling the things inside the course but only make money by selling the course, you know what I'm talking about? They're not gonna want to hear this brutal truth about making multiple streams of income. I'm gonna share with you four stages that you need to go through as an entrepreneur. I'm gonna share with you four things you need to drive to build your business. I'm gonna share with you 13 lucky skill sets to get you to a seven figure multiple streams of income type of capacity. How? Stay posted. I'm gonna start here in this episode of the Seven Figure Squad starting in three, two, one. Let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm G Steady through the rigor. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from Dallas, Texas. And in this episode, I promise you, I will share with you the brutal truth about making multiple streams of income. Should you do it? Should you not do it? Should you do it right now? Should you do it later? I'll share with you in this episode. But before we begin, if we have been sharing these videos and you've been getting value from these videos, please consider hitting like. And if you watch multiple videos on our YouTube channel, and you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel, a channel dedicated to help you think like a millionaire, to strategize like a millionaire, so therefore one day you can rise above this whole inflation, 7.9% inflation environment, gas price environment, so therefore you can become a first generation cash flow millionaire, the first one in your entire family. Not only have I done it, but other people have done it as well. So with that being said, let's get started. All right. The brutal truth about the multiple streams of income. I get asked this all the time. How many times have I been to a chamber of commerce meeting, a networking meeting? I've got business card upon business card upon business card of people talking about their products and services. They offer so many things. Real estate, mortgages, taxes, insurance, investments, loss care, weight loss management, all on one business card. And their fear is, Matt, well, if I don't share everything that I sell, I might lose revenue. If I'm going about my business and so I find somebody who wants to buy property and casualty insurance, I find somebody who wants to buy real estate, I find somebody who wants to buy an investment product, I find somebody who wants to sell, uh, that, that needs commercial insurance, I find somebody who needs to do their taxes, I find somebody who wants to sell e-commerce and Amazon. If I don't sell them through me, they're gonna buy through somebody else and all that effort I took into prospecting and building a relationship, I'm gonna lose it because I don't have that offering. I don't have that product, I don't have that service. Man, I'm going to lose it, Matt. <sighs> Listen, that mentality, in my opinion, is a scarcity mentality. It does not come from an abundance mentality. I choose to operate from an abundance mentality. A lot of people operate from a scarcity mentality. There's a lot of money to be made, and uh, I want you to make sure you get your fair share, because the last thing I want you to experience a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, is that you're getting smashed because inflation is still at 15%, because gas prices are at $15 a gallon. The last thing I want you to experience is getting smashed economically because you chose to divert your attention, divert your capital and your resources instead of focusing on one thing. So let's talk about the four stages of growth. What I was becoming was a sales leader. I was just in sales. I'm a sales leader amongst my peers, <clears throat> amongst the people that are around me, I was kicking their butt on the leader's bulletin. I became confident in my skills, I became confident in my abilities, I became very confident in my products and services, and I felt for the very first time in my entire life, wow, I can do this for a very long time. I can sell this product or service for the rest of my life, and that's being a sales leader. And then number two, once I realized that two things started to happen. I needed to scale my business, meaning that I like to be in multiple parts of the city, more than just one, and number two, I realized a lot of people were being attracted, not necessarily to my products and services, but most of the career and the business that I was in. People said, Matt, how do I make six figures like you? How do I make 250 like you? So I was, I was easily recruiting people because I was making money compared to what they were doing and they wanted options. So I went from a sales leader to a sales manager. Now, as somebody under my management, I'm teaching them how I made my money 
and they can do it too as well. So I created systems and processes and ways for them to duplicate my success. And number three, I would slide into becoming a business owner because now I've got multiple areas. I got multiple departments. I got sales is one department. Marketing is another. Human resources, right? Legal compliance, right? I got new business com uh, uh, commissions. I got so many departments that now as a business owner, I had to manage. But it wasn't until I learned to become a CEO, to start analyzing my business like a CEO, and I understood now, outside of four stages of growth, if I'm gonna be a CEO, there's four things I needed to drive. Four things I needed to drive, well beyond just driving sales. And what are those four things I needed to drive? Well, I, drive, I separate here to two major components. Linear, uh, uh, linear, things that give me linear results are things that are are, uh, that are necessary to run a business, they give me linear results, and things that are exponential in my activity, exponential in growth for my business. So let me explain. Linear, operations and systems. Okay, I got a checklist for my social media team. I got a checklist for my uh, submitting new business. I got a checklist for making sure we know how to hire and fire people. I got a checklist for uh, doing an event. I got a checklist for uh, doing a, uh, a first interview. I got a checklist for doing a second interview. I got a checklist Checklist, 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 process, process, process. Those are running my business. So therefore, when I hire somebody, they have to fire somebody, hire somebody again. I have the operations and systems to uh, uh, not have to start from scratch and build somebody from scratch all over again. I got those systems and operations already in place so somebody can come in and take it from there. The second part of this, in terms of the linear category of this quadrant, is sales and business development. I gotta drive sales, of course. I gotta cultivate marketing. I gotta cultivate relationships in the marketplace. I gotta find other vendors or the people in the community, uh, strategic alliances, they'll help me sell more of my products and services, have collaborative agreements, so therefore I can expand my enterprise. And then there's exponential. So now I have a sales team. I have a marketing team. Now I gotta create a next innovative campaign and, and build my, my guys from followers into leaders. Leadership development. This here, show me any organization. Show me a church, uh, show me a sports organization, show me a nonprofit organization, for profit organization, a corporation, nonprofit, a charity. Show me something that's growing. Show me a choir that's growing, and guess what I'll find? I, I'll find you a leader at work. How do I create more leaders in my departments? How do I create more leaders in this city, this area? Uh, how do I create more leaders in this division or this initiative? Why? Because then I'm sourcing this leadership development to help me incorporate operations and systems, help me incorporate sales and business development. Uh, I, you know, these next innovative campaigns, these are always fun. You know, for example, I'm thinking like, like Mike, uh, uh, like Mike, the, the Nike campaign, like Mike, I wanna be like Mike, right? And what did like Mike campaign do for Nike? Right, Bo knows. What did Bo knows campaign do for Nike? It got Nike to a level of brand recognition that all athletes wanted to wear Nike. Okay, so you've got multi-million dollar aspirations. Shoot, you just want to make six figures, two fifty, five hundred thousand dollars. You want to scale from one million to two million, two million to five million. Awesome. Here's thirteen skill sets because listen, multiple streams of income has to start from a foundation. And we discovered 13 lucky skill sets that serve as a foundation for your multi-million, multi-six-figure aspiration, multiple, multiple seven-figure aspirations. And these skill sets are, are such. You gotta learn sales. You gotta learn relationships, human nature. You gotta pick up financial skills, reading a PL, understanding savings and investments, negotiations, how to negotiate an event, a venue, restaurant, um, something for your team, company paid trip. Uh, business management, how do you deal with the business you have right now so therefore your highest and best use of your time. Emotional intelligence, data analysis, economics, how to hire and fire the right type of people, effective communication, how to evangelize your product and service, how do you evangelize your company message, how do you evangelize your corporate culture, how do you evangelize that people want to work here versus my competitor, and last but not least, skill set I think today that has been majorly overlooked is common freaking sense. Right? Common daggone sense, all right? So these are 13 lucky skill sets in order for you to create either one of these two options. So what are they? So oftentimes people say, I want multiple streams of income, Matt. I want multiple streams of income, Matt. The question is when? And the myth I like to demystify right now is that millionaires get to millionaire status by getting there with multiple streams of income. I want to demystify that. I want to demystify that right now because my personal experience, now there's many other people that may prove me otherwise, but I'm sharing with you right now. 
is the host of the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel. Some of you may agree with me, some of you may not. But I got to my six figures and seven figures aspirations in this following manner. We all got cash, we all got cash from sales, right? Back over here. Became a sales leader, created sales. So we all have cash, right? So we have cash minus expenses left over in the company that's now capital. You got capital right now, instead of living off of it, that capital now is used to reinvest back into the business. Into what though? Into sales development, operations and system, operations and systems, leadership development, and next innovative campaign from the capital that you are able to derive from minimizing expenses and maximizing revenue, that becomes now your capital. Instead of living on your business too soon, you reinvest that back into your company, otherwise known as capital. So here's the dilemma. You're starting your business. You got uh, person A, person B here. They both have cash and capital. They start making sales. They start getting results from the business. And one says, uh oh, I want to diversify because millionaires make their millions by multiple streams of income. Well, here's a problem. You divert all of these skills into another product or offering. You divert these skills into another city and state. You divert these skills and cash and capital into a new product that you still have not researched and developed over time. In other words, you're diverting your cash, capital, and, in, and, in, and, and talent and intentions to multiple different areas too soon. And what happens instead of having multiple streams of income, now you just got multiple trickles. It diverts your attention, it diverts your focus, and you're spinning too many plates, as if there are not already enough plates to spin with one business or one product, service, or offering, then divert it to four, five, six different other products and offerings. For most businesses, it does not work well. It doesn't end well. However, with that being said, you got this cash, you got this capital, now you're flowing down this cash flow river, you increase your skills, your, your skills and your abilities, you increase the, the business development uh, uh, results and relationships that you start, you have your, your leaders and your leadership development in different departments start to expand and grow those departments. Next thing you know, you got more cash, more capital, more relationships, more orders, more revenue. Listen, at the end of the day, what do you want? You want multiple trickles of income? Or do you want an Amazon River, a Mississippi River, a cash flow? coming down your way, a strong, wide, deep revenue stream, cash flow stream, that if any emergencies arise, if any emergencies come up, emergency money, capital money, to pay for legal expenses. You wanna hire somebody to manage the department. You have an opportunity to take, take advantage of. You got a company you wanna buy out, guess what you have now? You got cash, and after focusing on one thing, our cash and capital, guess what else we invested in? We invested in a liquor company known as Uncle Nearest Whiskey. Why? Because we had cash and capital from saving money, tucking money away, tucking money away, tucking money away, focusing on one thing. And then down here, we start having multiple streams of income. And today, the liquor company, Uncle Nearest Whiskey, is the fastest growing whiskey company in the history of the liquor and distillery industry. Why? Because we had cash and capital and relationships that we built through one Mississippi Amazon River of cash flow that diverted later on down the road at the most appropriate time into then multiple streams of income. The challenge with a lot of people are, they divert it too soon, too fast, and they never get to this outcome. So as a wrap up, ask yourself, am I being distracted? Are people trying to offer me this, offer me that? I got Bitcoin, I got NFTs, I got a blockchain, I got insurance, I got real estate, I got this. Listen, a lot of opportunities sound great, but find one thing that has longevity. Find one thing that one twist in technology isn't going to make your current technology, your current product or service a, a foregone conclusion, outdated thing. Find one thing that's old. Find one thing that's rich, a rich industry. Find one thing that you have a flagship product that you can market and sell that everybody can buy. Once you find that one thing, boom, focus. Versus trying to worry about, oh, I'm going to miss out on this opportunity, miss out on this opportunity, miss out on this opportunity. Listen, as much as there is power in the word yes, what I found is there's much more power in the word no. A couple more questions to ask yourself. Am I truly focused? Outside of me not just being distracted, am I truly focused? And number three, am I really improving? Because here's what's gonna happen in this process. Sometimes people don't want to improve and therefore they divert, instead of improving, they divert their attention. 
instead of maximizing the growth and attention, they say, oh, let me just get distracted by the next shiny eye. Squirrel syndrome, some people call it. And last but not least, ask yourself this question. Which one of these scenarios would an investor trust me? Which one of these scenarios would my family trust me with my time and attention? Which one of these scenarios would people trust me with their hard, cold cash to expand and grow again? That question you have to process. So before I let you go, please check out these two videos here. The first video I want you to watch is pick the industry most likely to make you a millionaire. There's five industries that we go over. Number one will shock you. Number two is how to do the millionaire math. All making money is six figures, 250, 500,000, seven figures. All it is is a math problem compounded by time and effort, but this will help you do the math necessary for you to become a first generation cash flow millionaire. So with that being said, I'd love to know your thoughts, your questions, your comments, your feedback. You agree with me? You don't agree with me? I'd love to know. Put it in the comment section below. I do my very best to respond to every one of your replies and comments in the comment section below. And if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our Facebook page, Money Smart Guy. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click like, hit subscribe, and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. From Dallas, Texas, I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.